What a song has a beautiful sound but a disturbing meaning. I was coming here to post this. The wife had Alzheimer's and the husband had either a brain tumor or had brain surgery. Irk. They were headed to a festival and were found at the bottom of a ravine. I saw Fastball when this song was released and the lead singer went into a lot of detail about how the story affected him. Born in the USA is about a man who got into some trouble as a kid, got shipped off to Vietnam, saw his good friends die there and was an outcast of society coming back home, yet for some reason, it's played all over the place as a patriotic anthem. Ronald Reagan even briefly used it as his campaign song before Springsteen told him to stop. The Mexican National Anthem It was rated pretty high as far as the music of national anthems go in the world but the lyrics are gruesome. So gruesome that we don't actually sing all of it in ceremonies. It talks about war like if we were bloodthirsty. We haven't even gone to war since it was written. Except for World War II where Mexico sent one squad of around 300 people to help in the Philippines. These are the parts that are still official but are not singed in public ceremonies. Inverted exclamation mark gura. Inverted exclamation mark guerra sin tregua al que intenti de la patria mantra los blasens. Inverted exclamation mark guerra. Guerra. Los patrios pendants en los olis de sangrum papad. Inverted exclamation mark guerra. Guerra, en el monte, en el vale los canones horacenos truinan y los ecos sonoros resuinan con los voces de inverted exclamation mark union, inverted exclamation mark libertad, entries patria, que inermis dos hijos bajo el yugo su cuello doble egan, dos campanas can sangre se regan, sobre sangre se estampt su pi, whitos templos, palacios y taboras se drumban con horido estruendo, Y ses ruanas existan de chanto, de mil heroes la patria aqui few. English, war, war without truce to whoever tries to stain the shields of our fatherland. War, war, the patriotic banners soak in the waves of blood. War, war, in the mountains, in the valley the horrid cannons thunder and the sonorous echoes resonate with the chants of inverted exclamation mark union. Liberty, first the fatherland. Before your children defenseless bending their neck under the yoke, your fields with blood are watered, his foot is stamped on blood, and your temples, palaces and towers collapse with the horrid roar, and its ruins remain saying, of a thousand heroes the fatherland was here. To be fair, the first lines of the anthem kind of give off the general tone of the whole thing. Mexicanos. Al grito de guerra el acero apostado y al britan y retenbol ancest centros la tierra inverted exclamation mark el sonro ruger del canon. Mexicans, at the cry of war assembled the steel and the bridle and made the earth tremble at its core to the resounding roar of the cannon. Edit, speaking of national anthems, la marchiles could share a spot with the Mexican national anthem. I love that lyric that takes a dig at the people who don't listen to the deeper meaning of the song. You all don't wanna hear me, you just wanna dance. Edit, I've gotten some replies from people acting like I've personally insulted them by thinking this lyric is kinda funny. I get it, many people like dancing and don't care much for lyrics. That's perfectly fine and there's no real judgment okay? I'll enjoy the lyrics and you all can dance. No need to get all pissy about it lamel. Summertime from Porgy and Bess, covered by everyone you've ever heard of. In the opera, the song is sung three times. Once at the beginning by Clara as a lullaby to her baby who won't sleep. Later, she sings it to the baby again when a severe storm is about to hit while her husband and many other men from their black South Carolina fishing community are forced to be at sea because of their poverty. When the curtain rises on the third act, we learn Clara and her husband both died in the storm, and now Bess is singing Summertime to the baby. He's come out and clearly said what it means in an interview. His friend Sarah had the realization that one day she would live through her husband dying, or die first. When you agree to stay with someone for the rest of your life, then that's what that means. Loving someone enough to give them your life is possibly watching them die. So the question he is asking at the end of the song is, Who's going to watch you die? Who will be there when that happens? 
all of the songs on In Rainbows by Radiohead. The funny thing is that it's known as their happiest album. 15th Step is about death and shit. Hard to explain why. Body Snatchers is about feeling like you can't express your true self, and that you're trapped in a body you don't fit in. New is about holding back aspirations because nothing you are waiting for will be worth it and won't be how you imagined it. Word Fishes slash Arpeggi is about holding yourself back. Feeling uncomfortable with where you are in life and finally leaping out and trying to achieve something. All I need is about being in love with someone who doesn't even acknowledge your existence. The only one that's obviously sad is videotape. This album also just happens to be fucking amazing so you should definitely listen to it. As a huge Pumpkins fan. Billy has openly stated this as kind of his ironic suicide note. He was so depressed about the reception to Jish and stressed about what he saw as his last chance to make a hit album. Dude recorded the whole album himself apparently, except for Jimmy on the drums. And Jimmy was disappearing on heroin binges during the recording sessions as well. So much drama around this great album. Sublime is really the best answer to this whole thread. Sublime in general had a beautiful happy energetic sound but a disturbing undercurrent and reality with a tragic end that seeped into the music somewhat unnoticed at times. I didn't discover them until after he passed, but still one of my favorite bands that I wish I had been able to see live. Hopefully Bad Fish will swim by my city at some point. Polly by Nirvana It's a pretty sounding song. But it becomes really depressing when you know that the song is about the abduction and rape of a 14-year-old girl in August 1987 in Washington. She was strung up and tortured with a blowtorch before being repeatedly raped and barely escaped when she jumped out of his truck at a gas station to draw attention. To add to that, after it came out two pieces of shit decided to rape a girl while singing the song. Kurt was so upset by this he included this note in the liner notes of Incesticide. Last year, a girl was raped by two wastes of sperm and eggs while they sang the lyrics to our song Polly. I have a hard time carrying on knowing there are plankton like that in our audience. Sorry to be so anally PC but that's the way I feel. The gist of the German version is this. 99 balloons were mistaken as UFOs and a general sent a flying squadron to check it out. It was supposed to be a reconnaissance mission, but the 99 pilots began to shoot anyway. Neighboring countries perceived this as a provocation and declared war. It escalated, and after 99 years of fighting the world lies in ruins. A survivor finds a single balloon and lets it float away. Nice choice. Ten years burning down the road with nowhere to run and nowhere to go. This is the sound of a nobody veteran who can't catch a break in a screwed up country, not patriotic drivel about how great USA is. Reagan wanted to the song at campaign events, but Springsteen refused. I think people have a need to feel good about the country they live in. But what's happening, I think, is that that need, which is a good thing is getting manipulated and exploited. The boss set things straight. Like a Stone, by Audio Slave. Bassist Tim Comerford claims that the song is about an old man waiting for death, who sits in a house alone after all his friends and family have passed on, waiting to be reunited with them. 3, 4. However, while Comerford originally thought it was a song about love and romance, Band singer and songwriter Chris Cornell explains that it's a song about concentrating on the afterlife you would hope for. Rather than the normal monotheistic approach, you work really hard all your life to be a good person and a moral persona and fair and generous, and then you go to hell anyway. 5. Wikipedia Yeah, Mark Foster explained it in an interview. Pumped Up Kicks is about a kid that basically is losing his mind and is plotting revenge. He's an outcast. I feel like the youth in our culture are becoming more and more isolated. It's kind of an epidemic. Instead of writing about victims in some tragedy, I wanted to get into the killer's mind, like Truman Capote did in In Cold Blood. I love to write about characters. That's my style. I really like to get inside the heads of other people and try to walk in their shoes. Truly harrowing. I mean it's not really surprising if you've read up on the history of Rasputin and how he swindled his way into the Russian royal family. Imagine you are the royal family and your son is suffering from a somewhat incurable illness, 
One day a mysterious man who is a self-proclaimed mystic shows up at your door and somehow makes your son's illness manageable using non-traditional medicine and meditation. This mystic's reputation spreads around the town and pretty soon everyone wants a look at this new celebrity and because his work seems to be effective he is kept around the royal family despite being a peasant with no royal ties. Eventually royal family members suspect this Rasputin to be sticking around for reasons other than healing and suspect him to be having an affair with the Tsar's wife despite having no evidence. In order to squash the rumors a plan is put into place to remove this man and any trace of his time with the royal family. They tried killing Rasputin twice, once by poison when they lured him into the basement parlor with high-ranking members of the family. He drank the tainted wine and nothing happened, then upon the realization that the man seemed invincible they shot him, the first in his back and again in his head when they initially realized the first bullet didn't do the job, they dumped his body into the frozen river where it was recovered under the ice days after his killing. The entire story of Rasputin is sad. The song just takes that sad story and puts it to a beat and melody. The entire story behind Rasputin is murky and mysterious. Some believe him to be divine while others pass him off as nothing more than a snake oil salesman who conned his way into a vulnerable royal family who were willing to try anything to save the railing son. Seeing as you didn't expand on why this song constitutes as an answer to the question, the song translates essentially to dad, where are you? Starmy, the singer who was Belgian, was born to a Flemish mother and a Rwandan father. His father was a Tutsi. And if you know anything about the Rwandan genocide you know that the Tutsi people were hunted down and slaughtered by the rival Hutu people. His father just so happened to be visiting family in Rwanda at the time when it was starting to kick off, and he was murdered. The song is all about growing up and wondering where his father is, and the troubles his mother had in terms of explaining the circumstances, the confusion as a result and the worry, anxiety of what kind of father he would be without having a father figure growing up. Partially true, per the band's wiki. In 1983, producer Ted Templeman asked Roth to listen to the unused song idea, riding around in the back of his 1951 Mercury, with band roadie Larry Osler driving. Roth listened repeatedly to the tune, to come up with a lyric for it. He remembered seeing a TV news report the night before about a suicidal jumper. Roth thought that one of the onlookers of such an event would inevitably yell go ahead and jump. Roth bounced this suggestion off Osler who agreed it was good. However instead of describing a potential suicide, the lyrics were written as an ontological invitation to action, life and love. I'd about that one dot 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 speaking with Rolling Stone. Bruce said the memorable event in question that inspired the lyrics of the song was a night he went out binge drinking and got so intoxicated that he was kicked out of a taxi he was riding in because he vomited in it, according to Roos. It took him a full day to become a proper functioning adult. After that while drinking night, which he called his worst drinking night of all time. It might not be the worst, but escape. AKA the Pinnacle at a song. It's about a couple who seem to hit a rut. The BF husband finds an ad in the paper for a woman who seems perfect for him, offering to run away with them. He quickly responds, setting up a rendezvous. But when he meets her, he discovers it was his GF wife who placed the ad. Then they laugh and realize they never knew this stuff about each other. I know it's supposed to be a mix of quirky and romantic. But after really listening to those lyrics, all I think when I hear the song is, couples therapy. Now, I would say Rolling Girl by Wow A Cap Feet. It sounds all cheerful with that Mui Kai, Mui Kai. But looking at the lyrics it tells the story of a girl being so bullied, trying to live life and ends up giving up at the end. I would also say the disappearance of hot soon Miku by Cosmop Feet. Dot. It tells the story of someone feeling their life being taken away, disappearing one song. She's pouring her non-existent heart out while being torn away. I don't have as good examples as everyone else, but I'll try to give two examples that hopefully fit the criteria. One, Inmate, 4859 by Sabitan. Great song, depressing as hell story. Two, 
The German national anthem, officially they only use the first stanza because it's the only one that is, well, appropriate. The second stanza talks about its great women and beer and was made to be sung in taverns by a bunch of drunk dudes enjoying life. And the third stanza is associated with the Nazis. This has not stopped foreign singers from just singing all three stanzas. Grimes Oblivion In an April interview in 2012, Grimes explained the song's true meaning. The song is about being violently assaulted and it made me crazy for a few years. I got really paranoid walking around at night and started feeling really unsafe. The song is more about empowering myself physically amongst the masculine power, and the hate of feeling powerless, making light of masculine physical power, making it jovial and not threatening. I took a typically violent cultural situation and made it pop and happy throughout. Imagery depicting a dark night evokes both the actual event of the assault and her process of coping with the trauma. Lou Reed, the bed that needs to be listened to to appreciate the bitter sweetness. This is the place where she lay her head when she went to bed at night and this is the place our children were conceived candles lit the room brightly at night and this is the place where she cut her wrists that odd and fateful night and I said, oh, 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 oh. What a feeling and they said, oh, 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 what a feeling this is the place where we used to live I paid for it with love and blood and these are the boxes that she kept on the shelf filled with her poetry and stuff and this is the room where she took the razor and cut her wrists that strange and fateful night and I said, oh, 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 what a feeling and they said, oh, 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 oh. What a feeling I never would have started if I'd known that it's sent this way but funny thing, I'm not at all sad that it stopped this way stopped this way. Well, where oh where can my baby be? The Lord took her away from me, she's gone to heaven, so I got to be good, so I can see my baby when I leave this world. We were out on a date in my daddy's car, we hadn't driven very far, there in the road, straight ahead, the car was stalled. The engine was dead. I couldn't stop, so I swerved to the right. Never forget the sound at night. The crying tires. The busting glass. The painful scream that I heard last. Well, where oh where can my baby be? The Lord took her away from me. She's gone to heaven, so I got to be good. So I can see my baby when I leave this world. Well, when I woke up. The rain was pouring down. There were people standing all around. Something warm running in my eyes. But I found my baby somehow that night. I raised her head, and when she smiled, and said, Hold me darling for a little while. I held her close, I kissed her our last kiss. I found the love that I knew I would miss. But now she's gone, even though I hold her tight. I lost my love. My life, that night. Well, where oh where can my baby be? The Lord took her away from me. She's gone to heaven, so I got to be good. So I can see my baby when I leave this world. Europe's final countdown. The song hits totally different now. When our planet gets to point of no return and we take a rocket ship to another planet. We're leaving together but still it's farewell and maybe we'll come back to Earth. Who can tell? I guess there is no one to blame we're leaving ground. Leaving ground. Will things ever be the same again? It's the final countdown the final countdown oh we're heading for Venus. Venus. And still we stand tall cause maybe they've seen us and welcome us all. Yeah with so many light years to go and things to be found, to be found, I'm sure that we all miss her so it's the final countdown the final countdown the final countdown. Final countdown. Oh, oh. Wikipedia copy pista. When Reznor was asked if Cash could cover his song. Reznor said he was flattered but worried that the idea sounded a bit gimmicky. He became a fan of Cash's version. However, once he saw the music video, I popped the video in, and wow, tears, welling, silence, goosebumps, wow. I felt like, I just lost my girlfriend, because that song isn't mine anymore. It really made me think about how powerful music is as a medium and art form. I wrote some words and music in my bedroom as a way of staying sane. About a bleak and desperate place I was in, totally isolated and alone. Somehow, that winds up reinterpreted by a music legend from a radically different era, genre and still retains sincerity and meaning, different, 
but every bit as pure. 